today is foundation friday happy foundation friday if you're new here this is where i test out a new oh god I have an eyebrow itch foundation friday is where i test out a new foundation every single friday i'm gonna link the playlist down below if you've missed any of the videos if you ever want to know if i've done a review on a foundation all you got to do is search the Taylor and then the foundation name in the youtube search box and it'll bring it right up if I have it. Crazy. But today I'm gonna to be trying out the brand new Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation. I heard about this from Instagram, and as soon as I saw that she was coming out with a shit ton of shades, I was stoked. And I ordered this the day that it launched on her website. Since I ordered this right when it came out, the lightest shade was porcelain at the time, so that's what I ordered, but they actually now have two lighter shades. They have alabaster and warm alabaster, which I guess they released after. There are now 28 shades available on her website. Swatch time right here is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Foundation in porcelain. Next over is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation in 115. This is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. This is the Cover FX Click Stick Foundation in N10. And this is MAC Studio Fix in NW10. So in this stick foundation, you get 0.32 ounces of product and this retails for $25. I feel like that's kind of hard to comprehend without some kind of comparison. Just to give you an idea of prices per ounce, the Makeup Forever Stick Foundation is 0.44 ounces. And retails for $43 so if you break down the price per ounce about 98 cents per ounce and the Anastasia Beverly Hills stick foundation is 78 cents per ounce so this is a better deal price per ounce wise but with that being said you'll see in the demo I do feel like you have to apply more of this than you do the makeup forever stick foundation so definitely go through this faster I feel like I love that there are so many different shades it looks like the deep shades actually go pretty deep and the fair shades definitely go super fair I wish I had the two lightest shades just to swatch for you guys but you'll see when I swatch this foundation it is pretty fair which is awesome so it says it's a highly pigmented buildable cream formula leaves a natural matte finish. Applies an all over foundation, sheared out as a tinted moisturizer or for highlighting and contouring. On Sephora, it says it's a medium to full coverage. It says it's ideal for combination or oily skin. I have combination skin with cystic acne. I usually get kind of oily in my T-zone throughout the day. I never touch up throughout the day. I just like to put my foundation on in the morning, go about my life have it stay on my face. A lot of reviews I've seen have been raving about this product. It has mixed reviews on Sephora, so I'm curious to see what I think of this by the end of the day. Also in this video, I'm trying out the tarp, tarp, tarp. I just had a flashback to elementary school when you'd like put that ball in that big tarp and everyone had to like throw it up. Okay, moving on. The Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. Everyone has been raving about this. I finally was able to get my hands on it. I also wanted to announce in this video, if you saw the best and worst of 15 days of foundation, I mentioned we're gonna be doing another 15 days of foundation series every few months on my channel, which I know a lot of you guys are super excited about. I'm super excited about. October has turned out to be insane. I just have a ton of stuff going on, so there's literally no way I'll be able to film 15 days of foundation for October. So we're gonna be doing the next 15 days of foundation in November. November 5th to the 20th, I am just gonna be bracing myself for 15 days. Can't believe we're doing this again. If you guys like this video and are excited about 15 days of foundation and foundation Friday, if you just love foundation, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Baby Doe family and subscribe. Let's get into the video. We've got the coffee, which I need to drink ASAP. I've already primed my face with the Jouer Anti-Blemish Matte Primer. Some of you guys have noticed that my skin's been doing better than usual. I don't know if it's one of my phases where it's good for a few weeks and then a ton of acne will pop up again, but all I've changed is my primer. I started using this and the Peter Thomas Roth. I think it's called AHA Night Repair. So I've got this bad boy right here. I'm going to be applying one half of my face with the brush. I'm using this e.l.f. brush because this is my favorite one to apply stick foundations typically. I have a bunch of different reviews on stick foundations. I will link some of them down below. On the other half of my face, I'll be using this sponge. Ooh, rose gold. Super pretty packaging. Feels like a nice quality stick. Doesn't feel like cheap plastic or anything. Actually, Cat feels a little cheap, but rose gold makes up for it. I do have a little bit of color on me right now. I just got back from... Mexico and San Diego and I had self tanner on and last night I tried to fully scrub it all off But I do feel like I have a little bit of color left over so I'm just gonna apply how I normally apply stick foundation I use quite a bit to get the kind of coverage. I like That's usually my amount. So let's try the sponge first on this side of my face 
Okay, right off the bat, it doesn't blend as easy as the Makeup Forever Stick Foundation. Applying major pressure to blend this out. You can still see all of my acne pretty much coming through. So definitely not full coverage with this sponge with that amount. I'm gonna try the other side of my face and then we'll definitely have to go in to build this up. It does say this is buildable. Oh shit, forgot to take a before photo. We're gonna have to do a in action shot. Yeah, this definitely feels stiffer than the Makeup Forever Stick foundation. That one blends out super effortlessly. This one, you really gotta blend in. So off the first layer, this isn't full coverage. I can completely still see even freckles coming through. It did cover up the redness pretty well and helped like even out my skin tone, but as far as acne, all of the acne, even on this side too with the brush, is still coming through. So let's do the forehead, and then I'm probably gonna have to go back in for a second layer. It just doesn't blend out that nicely, I feel like. Keep in mind that the lights are making it look more flawless than it actually is, but you can still see acne coming through here, freckles, scarring. Even my forehead, which doesn't have a whole lot of problem areas on it, doesn't look totally flawless or like full coverage. Shade-wise, for me right now, it looks a little bit light, I think just because I still have some color. Okay, so let's try and build this guy up. And when I use the Makeup Forever Stick Foundation, when I apply this amount of product, that gets me full coverage. I don't go in for a second layer with that foundation. Since you have to really blend this, I almost feel like I'm wiping away some of the product on the second layer. You can't just like stipple, you really have to buff it. Still not full coverage. I would say that this is medium coverage with two layers on my skin. Keep in mind, I have a lot more to cover up than your average beauty guru. <laughs> My lips are so dang dry right now. I don't know what's going on. The way that this blends out kind of reminds me of the Cover FX stick foundation, the click stick thing that I did a first impression on during 15 Days of Foundation. So we have two layers on right now. First thoughts, not as much coverage as I would like. You can see some like texture on my forehead. I'm just going to go over with the sponge and just pounce to see if we can get rid of that. Uh, no. With the amount of product I applied, I would like it to be a little bit more full coverage. I feel like I had to use a shit ton of product just to get a medium coverage. So I'm going to try out the Shape Tape Concealer by Tarte for the first time on camera, because why not? I've been tweeting about this nonstop. They've literally been sold out for weeks on Ulta. Tarte made this exclusive to Ulta, and then it was sold out for forever. So I finally got my hands on this online. I have the lightest shade, which is fair. People have been raving about this concealer, so I'm excited to see what I think about it. Whoa, this is freaking huge. I think this is the most giant concealer that I own. How many ounces is in here? There's 0.33 fluid ounces. Let's see how much is in Naked. In my Urban Decay Naked concealer, there's only 0.16, so this is literally double that, which is awesome. Whoa, huge ass wand. This reminds me of the Clinique foundation wand a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply. I don't know how much we need of this. Maybe we should start with one eye. <laughs> nah. Typically, I like to just use my finger to apply this concealer under the eyes. It feels nice and creamy, but not too creamy where it's like totally sliding around. Feels like it is starting to set and the shade looks light. It feels super lightweight but I'm getting really good coverage. Formula definitely feels a lot more lightweight to me and like thin than the Urban Decay Naked skin. Like I almost feel like I could not set this with a powder. Since I like a tiny bit more coverage on my face, I'm gonna apply a tiny bit down the bridge of my nose, chin, just like a super tiny amount and forehead. A little bit goes a long way. So far, really liking the concealer. I really feel like it's almost drying like matte, which is awesome. I am almost wondering if I should set this or not. I might hold off on setting my face and do the rest of my makeup, and if I feel like I need to apply some setting powder to the under eyes, I will. It is creasing on my eyelid a little bit. So the foundation doesn't feel totally set, but it also doesn't feel like it's like sliding around. I think I could get away with not setting this as well. And it is supposed to be for oily skin, so I have combination oily skin. I tend to get oily throughout the day, especially on my T-zone, so I kind of want to see how the product wears alone without a setting powder. So I don't think I'm going to set my face. might set my under eyes. We will see. It's now 7.54, so 
8 a.m. I'm gonna play the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. All right, so it's now 8.14 in the morning. Rest of my makeup is on and I'll tell you what I used in a second, but I did have to use a little bit of setting powder because it felt like finish wise, it should be fine to blend out blush and bronzer on top but it got super, super patchy and I ended up having to go over it with a setting powder to like blend it out. So I used a tiny bit of the Cosmetics Celebration Foundation Illumination. Barely put any on the center of my face, mostly just concentrated that on my cheek area to blend everything out. And this powder also helped to warm up my face a little bit since it is a little bit dark. I think I could actually go shade up in this foundation. We'll see in the winter when I'm like my palest self but I do think I could go a shade up, which is promising because that means that there are three shades that are super pale. I think without a highlight and without setting spray, I use the NYX Dewy Finish, which I've been using every day. Without that, my face looked pretty dead. It looked pretty dry. If you have dry skin, I definitely would stay away from this one. It did feel nice, like it feels like skin, but as far as the finish, it looked kind of like satin finish, but with some texture and like dry patches. Right now, it's looking good with everything that I put on. Alone, I wasn't that into it. So for eyes, I just did a super simple kind of pinky matte eye using this BH Cosmetics Modern Mattes, is that what's called? Modern Mattes 28 color eyeshadow palette. This is like super cheap and the quality was actually really nice. Their shimmer palette is amazeballs. I need to do a look with that because I don't think I've ever shown it on YouTube, but it rocks. Also use this BH Cosmetics Satin Bronzer in the shade Tranquil Tan. I'm like 99% sure my face would look like crap right now if it weren't for this highlight. This is the ColourPop Flexitarian. This is one of their new highlights and you guys, this thing is freaking amazeballs. Look at that highlight. Concealer, I didn't end up setting, which is a miracle. It looks great, it's not creasing. It looks super natural under my eyes. Really like the concealer so far. And then on my lips is Essence Eyeliner in Natural Nude, no, in the Nude 11 with MAC Flesh Pot over top. All right, so up close, here's what it looks like. Like I said, with the powder and highlight, I think it looks 50 times better than it did without. I'm gonna try and do the next check-in in natural lighting so you guys can see the texture and stuff, but this is what it's looking like right now. So like I said, it's about 8.15 in the morning. I'm gonna go work from a coffee shop for a few hours and then and I have chiropractic at 30. I'm gonna try and check in before then because usually when I go there, I'm like face down and my makeup gets all messed up, but I guess we'll see how it wears. I do have foundations that wear fine after chiropractic, so we'll see how this one holds up. We're really putting it to the test. We are. Okay, so it's now 12 o'clock, so the foundation's been on for about four hours. I thought we'd check in in natural lighting. It's super gloomy out today and raining, and I'm pretty stoked about it. I am so ready for fall right now. So nothing major to report at this point. Four hour mark looks pretty good. A little bit of creasing around my nose area, but nothing on my upper lip. My forehead looks good. I feel like my forehead actually looks better than when I first applied it. For me, this isn't enough coverage. I like a little bit more coverage so that it covers up all of my acne and stuff down here. Let's get up close and personal. I think it looks pretty nice on the forehead right now. You can definitely see my pores, like they're looking pretty large now that I'm looking at it in the camera. All right, so it is now 5.17 p.m. So the foundation's been on for nine hours. I look totally different right now because I'm about to film another video. But before I do that, I had to film this final check-in because I gotta fix this face situation before we film the next one. So I would say it looked good up until about the five hour point. From there on, it just started majorly breaking down, looks super cakey, and my pores look giant around my nose. I am super oily on my forehead, around here, on my chin, pretty much everywhere. I was in Nordstrom to return something. They typically have pretty good lighting, and even in there, it looked super cakey. For being for oily skin, I feel like I look oilier than I typically do, and I have foundations that I can wear and I don't have to set at all. This is just ridiculously oily. I wasn't doing anything like strenuous. I haven't been sweating. Even at the chiropractor, I told her I didn't want my face to get messed up, so I didn't go face down at all. And it still is like completely breaking down around my nose area. I'm gonna show you guys a close up right now so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've turned down the light, so hopefully you guys can see this, but look at how freaking giant my pores look. It looks super heavy right here. Like I feel like I could dig my nail in. 
it does not look great around this area at all. My under eye concealer looks amazing for not setting it on my eyes. This looks freaking great. I'm oily right here and it's breaking down a little bit. And then the forehead is just like a hot mess. Look at how freaking oily this is. The lights are like almost all the way turned down right now. So you can get an idea how oily this is without a major glare. Does not look great. You can see all of my pores up here just look super textured. I've seen some rave reviews on this product, so this could just be one that didn't work with my skin. Like I always say, watch different videos, form your own opinions. This is just my personal opinion. But with that being said, I would not recommend this foundation. I don't like this one. I don't think it held up well. I don't think it looked incredible when I first applied it and it just kind of went downhill throughout the day. So I would say save your 25 bucks on this one. If you've tried this and you've found a good way to apply it or a good setting powder or whatever, let me know. If you guys like this video and you're excited about Foundation Friday, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can always let me know down below your foundation suggestions. I also do Snapchat polls a lot of times where I'll ask you guys which one you want to see in the coming week. So if you're not following me on Snapchat, it's the tail of snaps. You can go cast your vote. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. I got attacked by a mosquito last night. My leg looks like I have the chicken pox. Has anyone else never had the chicken pox?